Hello there everyone and welcome back to the C Sharp Crash Course. In this episode we're going to be covering variables or value types. But for the sake of this I'm going to call them variables. A variable is a object that stores certain bits of data. This could be uh, from numbers to words to even classes themselves. In the program, I actually do use a variable here. The, this here is a variable reference. It's uh, created here. This is the variable. And this is what the variable is. So we're going to cover whole numbers. Uh, decimal numbers also known as floating point numbers uh, text or strings and that's going to be it so for whole numbers you have a few different options but the most common one you're going to use is a integer an integer is a 32-bit signed number. Uh, a signed number is a value that goes from minus to positive. Uh, a minus number to a positive number. Whereas a... Uh, I'm going to just call this U counter. As a... Uh, unsigned int goes from 0 to a positive number so in our counter we're going to set this equal to 0 next we're going to be covering the decimal point numbers or floating point numbers so these are the numbers that are not whole like an integer and the most common one you're going to use is a float, a floating point number. And we're going to call this one timer. And we're just going to set that to 0 0.0f. For floats, you use f to say this is a float number. Uh, for doubles, I'm going to call this d timer equals. I believe it's D you use. Yep, that shows it's a D and then a decimal. I believe all you do is that. Oh wait. No, it needs the M suffix. So for float you add the suffix of F. For double add the suffix at uh, the suffix of D. And for decimal, you add the suffix of M. So we're just going to keep our timer at that. So then I'm also going to create a tick rate to show you uh, tick rate to show you a decimal point number being used. So if you want to ever display text, you'll be using strings. So a string can contain any number of, well, I'm saying any number of characters. It can contain a certain amount of characters, but I'm not honestly sure how big that is. So what I'm going to be doing is creating a few strings. I'm going to call one start string. I can't spell and a public string count string so our start string is going to be called the timer is set to zero tick rate is set to i'm going to be doing this this zero here is used as a variable reference in itself this is used in string formatting and i'll cover that once we get to the right line command uh count string 
current count equals actually current count is and we're going to do that same zero we're going to get rid of this uh write method and we're going to create a public void update method what i'm going to do is timer plus equals tick rate and if timer is greater than or equal to 1f timer minus equals 1f so that's just going to put it back to uh back by one number that won't set it straight to zero but it'll set it equal to how many have basically passed so uh then we're going to do counter plus 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 just adds one to it minus minus will obviously take away one from it you can do that with timer as well but i'm going to for the sake of this i'm just doing timer minus equals one f and we're going to do console dot write line so we're going to pass in the count string and because we have this here we can pass in a second variable and we're going to pass in counter so now whatever the counter value is it's going to go into this zero if you have multiple you do one two three and so on each one of these is a follow-up parameter so i could put timer tick rate i can even put start string in if i wanted that's simple enough so what this can do update our timer increases if it's equal to zero we're going to increase the counter by one and we're going to write that to the console so in here we're going to access the uh variables we've created and the first thing we can do is console.write line my dot start string and we're going to pass in my dot tick rate I'm going to create a while loop here while well, my dot counter is not equal to 60 we're going to do my dot update so here we have a variable reference in my class and inside that we are accessing the variables of start string and tick rate and passing them into the console we're then checking if the counter is not equal to 60 and then we call in the uh my update if this is less basically less than 60. let's run this as you can see that went up very quickly as you can see the timer is set to zero tick rate is set to 0.01666667 and then current count but yeah that's how you can access some variables uh there are more variables than this in float string i'm going to bring up this here these are all the uh integral types so the whole numbers you've got a i'm going to skip some of the signed ones you've got a byte which is 0 to 255 this is common uh in binary a byte is 8 bits so that's a bit is 0 1 a byte is basically 8 of those a u short is basically 2 bytes so 255 multiplied by 2 is 65 535 the signed version of that is a short that is minus 32768 to 32767 the in as i've said is this number here 2 billion 1 million 440 uh 147 million 
147,483,647. That is a 32-bit integer or 4 bytes. Uh, a U int is 0 to... 4,294,967,295. This number here is basically 255 multiplied by 255 multiplied by 255 multiplied by 255 or 255 to the power of 4. Then, if you really need a bigger number than what an int provides or a uint provides, we've got a 64 bit integer, which is a long, which is this long number here to this long number here. Or a unsigned version, which is zero to this massive number here. You will never really use a uint sixty-four or an int sixty-four. Yes, so long and u long will rarely be used, but they can be for certain things. But you tend not to use them. There are. Uh, three floating point numbers. A float is 69 digits, 4 bytes. And the approximate range, I can't even cover. That's uh, a big number, basically. Let's just put it like that. A double has 15, 17 digits. And ranges from this to this and decimal is even bigger with 28 to 29 digits yep float is 4 bytes double is 8 bytes decimal is 16 bytes and oh I did forget one variable and I'll tell you a way we can do the issue we were having let's create a ball Or a true false. So we're going to create public ball done equals false. We're going to do if counter is equal equal to uh, 60, do done equals true. And what we can do here is We'll do the while loop in here while not done do this and we'll just do my dot update in here so now with that true false statement you can see it's working again I didn't actually close it okay so Bool is a true false statement. It can only be true or false. Can't be anything else. In terms of bits, a true equals one, false equals zero. Best way to think of it as kind of a a switch for a light bulb. In the off position, that is set to false. On the on position, that is set to true. So you can think of ball as true or false or on or off, yes or no, and so on. There are still a few variables that need to be covered, but for the most part, these are the ones you'll be using in uh, C Sharp the most, mainly when it comes to Terraria modding. These are the key ones that are used. There are some things that are a bit different, that you sometimes see and we'll get to those eventually but that's going to cover it for this episode in the next episode i'll be covering arrays and for loops and what i guess while loops uh just because i've covered these haven't explained them covered if statements haven't explained them either i'll also cover if statements uh but we're gonna basically Create an array, loop through it, and we're going to get some numbers from that. So thank you everyone for watching. Hopefully you have found this helpful. I'll provide that 
a link down in the description for the floating point numeric values and the integral values and uh, you can use that in your coding so thank you for watching if that's been helpful be sure to give it a like till the next episode thank you for watching and goodbye